What if I was dropped right in the middle of 10 acres, raw land, and I was told I had to graze sheep on there just like I'm doing it right here on my 30 acres. I had to set up everything from scratch. How would I do it and what would it cost? Today, I'm gonna to be answering exactly that question, even providing you with sources to the items I would use to do it. I'm gonna outline what you need to install, give you a ballpark figure on what those things are gonna cost. I'm gonna give you some options for the infrastructure for watering and electricity, even outlining some options for land that has neither electrical or water access on it yet. If you stick around to the end, I'm gonna give my suggestions on just how many sheep I would put on this 10 acre plot. Just as a quick disclaimer here, some of you may have resources and connections that will allow you to put this infrastructure in place at a lower cost. Some of you may have conditions that may cause this infrastructure to be at a higher cost. And I also wanna invite the experienced small scale sheep producers to please leave in the comments. If there's a way that you have built out any of this infrastructure in a unique way yourself, please comment below with what you've done. So my system is comprised of fencing, water, shelter and grazing infrastructure. And what I have done for you on these particular elements is I've created a PDF checklist. It's gonna provide you with references to exactly the sources I use or would use. First expense is associated with clearing the land for fencing. For about $500, you can rent a brush cutter from Lowe's or for $3,000, you can rent a forestry cutter package here in Northeast Texas, and that's for one week. I'd probably fall somewhere in the middle. I'd need to rent that brush hog for $500, and I'd probably need to rent help from my teenage brother to man a chainsaw to clear those fence lines. Element number two is perimeter fencing material. I would absolutely 100% recommend the fencing that I have on my farm right now, which is a woven wire roll fencing with six inch squares. The material cost on this kind of fencing is roughly $478 per 330 linear foot. This is with T-posts spaced 10 foot apart, and one one strand of barbed wire running across the top. This cost does not include labor, assuming that you will be willing to put in the sweat equity on this 10 acre plot. If I did not have enough wood from the initial fence clearing, I'd need $600 for four corner braces. And again, exactly what you will need for those corner braces is gonna be referenced on that PDF list down below. I would need one gate to be able to access the property and a 16 foot utility tube gate like I have right now is about $217 at my local farm store. I'd need an additional two posts to mount that gate on as well as two gate hinge kits at $18 a piece. So water access is big deal number two when you're developing land for sheep. But the good news is with sheep is that you have a tremendous disadvantage and that they don't drink a lot of water. Just as a first hand, I moved my sheep onto a new paddock today. This is a 40 gallon tank and this is all the water they drank yesterday. Now these moms, most of them are lactating. Granted, it is cool and they are grazing fresh grass, but overall, even on the hottest days, I've observed that my sheep drink about one gallon of water per head per day. If you have a hose or a spigot, you can do what I've done. And for $200, you can buy a 500 foot length of polyethylene tubing, as well as some low cost adapters. And I can get water from that spigot to basically any paddock that I construct. If you do not have water access, you have two options. Option number one is to dig a pond. And a pond suitable enough for a 10 acre sheep farm would cost anywhere from $1,200 to $3,600 to dig. Depending on your rainfall, ponds may or may not be an ongoing source of water for your flock. So here's what I would do instead. I would haul my water to the sheep. While this may initially come across as inefficient, let's break it down here. A 65 gallon tank, which will service a flock of 20 sheep for three days, costs $280. This means you'll have to refill twice a week. But if we're talking in the context of 20 or 30 sheep on 10 acres that I will already be working with regularly as part of my grazing rotation, hauling for me is a no brainer. A third element that we need to consider is housing or shelter. In my grazing program, on most days, trees provide all the shelter that my sheep need, but I would not run a sheep farm or raise sheep without at least some small shelter you can run them back to for predator protection, snow, freezing rain, so forth. There are a lot of options when it comes to shelter and I'd love to hear your ideas down below, but right now I am working with a company to produce basically a miniaturized version of the two-sided structure that I have right now. And the overall project is going to cost $2,200. This is a semi-portable structure, but it does have some permanent rods that go straight into the ground. I'll let you guys know how that actually works for me, but if it does work, it's going to be probably a lifetime structure. This shelter right here that you guys are looking at is the only shelter I've ever needed for my sheep. As 
as long as the bedding was dry, the sheep did just fine. Keep in mind, I am in Northeast Texas. We do get freezing temperatures, but nothing sub-zero for weeks and weeks on end. Also keep in mind that that closed side is facing the north. Okay, now that we have good fencing, good water, good shelter, we're gonna move on to rotational grazing infrastructure. I would not start a sheep farm without being on some sort of grazing rotation. And to do this, I need electrical access. Now again, same as with the water, I would not go to the expense of installing electrical access just to plug in a charger for 20 or 30 sheep. I go for a solar unit and right now a five joule solar setup is about $800. This would power that one line of perimeter fencing that I use to power all of my paddocks. I'd make sure I had a really good battery in case the cloud coverage rendered that solar unit ineffective for a few days. I'd use a marine deep cycle battery, which can be purchased a good one for about $200. So for about $1,000, I would have the solar power that I needed to run my electric fencing system. As far as rotational grazing supplies, I would buy six rolls of poly tape, which would cost me about $240. I would buy six reels. I would buy 40 step in posts at 219 each, two sets of triple jumper leads to carry that power from that top line to all of my paddock lines, and two reels stands with the matching brackets. You also need about $264 for the high tensile for the electric perimeter hot wire that's going to run on your fencing, as well as the insulators to string it to the T-posts. You're going to find direct links to these specific supplies as well as the tools to install them on that PDF supplies list below. And you always want to buffer for incidentals. So I would buffer a minimum of $1,500 for this particular project for any incidentals. In worst case scenario, this will be left over and you can go maybe on a cruise. A quick question I'm going to address here that you guys are probably going to be asking is how many sheep would you put on 10 acres? That's something that's very regional and very specific to areas, but right now here in Northeast Texas with 47 inches of rainfall and really good grass coverage on my pasture, I could easily run two or three sheep per acre. That said, I'd start with one sheep per acre. I would buy 10 of the best ewes I could find and one of the best ram that money can buy. Within about eight months, that flock size is going to double. Sheep are very prolific and they reproduce really quickly. Starting small is absolutely my anthem. It'll keep you from both financial and emotional burnout because getting a big group of animals, especially if you might be a beginner, it's gonna be really challenging as far as the learning curve goes. I say that because that's exactly what we did. We bought 36 sheep straight out of the chute, not knowing how to take care of sheep. And the learning curve was probably a lot steeper than it would have been should we started with a smaller quantity. We learned a lot and we learned it really fast, but we also had a lot of losses. So I always encourage people to start small. If you take good care of that flock, it's gonna grow really fast.